Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about on how to prove that this number is a limit of a function as the x approaches to a certain value. <laughs> So consider, for example, we have the limit of 3x plus 1 as x approaches 0. And we know for a fact that that is 1. So the question is, why is it 1? So in this video, we will talk about the algorithms on proving that this 1 is the limit of a given function as the value of x approaches to a given point using the delta epsilon method. So... Recall that given we have a function f, um, of course the f is defined at all values in an open interval, let's say containing its c. So of course except possibly at c. We say that the limit of this function as its x approaches to that c is let's say l if for every epsilon, that epsilon that is significantly very small, there always exists a delta that's greater than zero such that the absolute value of x minus c is less than the delta when we have this inequality that the absolute value of the function minus its limit is less than epsilon. Okay, here is the algorithm. Number one, we declare the epsilon. Okay, so that is based on the definition of the function saying that if for every epsilon that is significantly small, there always exists a delta. So once we declare the epsilon, we declare a delta. However, the delta should be dependent on the epsilon. So we would have to leave that as blank first with respect to the epsilon because we haven't known that yet. So, let's go to number 3. We compute and manipulate this. So, our goal of um, computing and manipulating that one is that we have to go through a story, a series of stories, in such a way that we would have to end with the expression in terms of this. Whatever would be the coefficient. In such a way that since we, when we declare the delta, we already know, because we would have to write such that here, that um, 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus c less than delta. That is according to the definition. So by this, we would have this expression. And so by number 4, we can replace this by a delta. So that the equality would be replaced by this in number 4. And once we get an expression in terms of the delta, so let's say we have a coefficient here and the delta, then we replace the expression delta in terms of epsilon. Okay, let us consider, for example, we prove that a limit of 3x minus 10 all over 5 as x approaches 5 is 1. How do we do that? Okay, so... To show that the that the one is the limit, we would have to follow the suggested algorithm. Number one is we declare the epsilon to be greater than zero. So we start let epsilon be greater than zero. Okay. According to algorithm number two, we declare the delta. However, the delta, which is greater than zero, should be dependent on the epsilon. So we choose delta okay that is greater than zero which is equal to something with respect to epsilon which in this case we do not know yet such that zero is less than x minus c our c in this case here is five so i'm gonna replace that by five less than delta okay and according to number three algorithm, we manipulate that um, absolute value of f of x minus l. Then we have, okay, so let's manipulate our f of x 
I'm gonna replace that by 3x minus 10 over 5. Our L is 1. Um, we can simplify this. So we have 3x minus 10 minus 5. Correct me if I'm wrong with my manipulation. And then we would have the absolute value of 3x minus 15 over 5. And so, what is this? So, um, our goal here is to manipulate in such a way that we, we would end up having the expression x minus 5 because that would be x minus c. Can I extract 3? So, I have 3 times x minus 5 over 5. And so, this is the same as 3 fit. So, I'm going to extract that out from the absolute value. Which is 3 over 5 times x minus c. So, we have gotten this part here. So, which means to say that we have already taken this one. Oh, I'm sorry. It should be 5 here. So I'm going to replace this by delta because we already know that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than delta. So if I replace this by delta, of course, the equality would be changed according to number. I'd have less than 3 over 5 delta. So what is now the value of my delta in such a way that this entire expression would be equal to epsilon because according to algorithm number five we replace the entire expression of the delta by the epsilon okay so technique here is um three over five delta you equate that to epsilon and so solving for delta you have uh, five over three epsilon and so, the blank space here is allotted for 5 over 3 epsilon. So that, so that I would have 3 over 5 times 5 over 3 epsilon. And so this will be cancelled. And so I get epsilon. So now that we have shown that this one here is less than epsilon. So according to definition, this is the story of the limit. Hence, we jump now into conclusion that the limit of 3x minus 10 all over 5 as x approaches 5 is equal to 1. Okay, so let's consider another example. Um, prove that the limit of the square root of x plus 5 all over 3 as x approaches 0 is square root of 5 over 3. So how do we show that again? First is we declare the epsilon to be greater than 0. So let epsilon be greater than 0. And then second is we choose delta. So your delta is greater than 0, which is equal to something that is expressed in terms of epsilon such that uh, 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 0. So this time this is x minus, I'm sorry, less than delta. Then we have this ex um, expression here. The function f, so that's um, x plus 5 all over 3 minus the square root of 5 over 3. Okay. Note that I can manipulate this. I have x plus 5 minus square root of 5 over 3, right? Um, I can multiply this by the conjugate of the numerator. So the conjugate is x plus 5 plus square root of 5 all over square root of x plus 5 plus square root of 5. That one. So what happened to our numerator, this becomes x plus 5 and then minus 5 all over um, 3 squared of x plus 5 
plus square root of 5. So this is equal to absolute value of x over 3 square root of x plus 5 plus square root of 5. That one. Um, the square root of x plus 5 is obviously greater, um, should be positive in such a way that your x should be positive to make the entire function define. Tama? So, ano mangyayari dito? The square root of x plus 5 is always greater than 0. So, ibig sabihin, um, mas malaki ang 3x plus 5 kesa 3 lang. So, if you take the reciprocal, I have 1 over 3 square root of x plus 5 is less than 1 third. So, pag sasamahin natin ang square root of 5, so pwede pa lang, ano siya? I can have, if you want that square root of 5, square root of 5. So, this is plus square root of 5, plus square root of 5. Ganyan. So, this means, this is way less than the absolute value of x over, kasi positive tayo, so automatic na yan plus square root of 5. Okay. So, yan yung mangyayari. So, this is already in terms of delta, tama? Kasi na-express na natin to. Yan. Yan. So, mangyayari, if I'm gonna replace that, I have delta over 3 plus square root of 5. Okay, so how am how I going to express this in terms of epsilon? So your delta over 3 plus square root of 5 equals epsilon. So solving for delta, you have um, delta equals 3 plus square root of 5 times epsilon. So therefore, um, I would place this as 3 plus square root of 5 epsilon. And so I have so I have um, square root of three plus five square root of uh, sorry three plus square root of five uh, epsilon all over three plus square root of five. So this will be cancelled. So you end up with epsilon. So yan pala yung adjustment mo ni delta na hinahanap mo. This one. Ito pala yung delta na hinahanap mo. So therefore, the claim is true that the limit of square root of x plus 5 all over 3 as x approaches 0 is square root of 5 over 3. That's it. Okay, one final example. Um, prove that the limit of square root of x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 as x approaches 0. So how do we show that? Um, let epsilon be greater than 0. And then, we choose delta. So your delta is greater than 0, which is dependent on the epsilon, which in this part we do not know yet, such that, 0 is less than x minus 0, so that's x lang, less than delta. Then we have, paano ba? Um, f of x, so that's square root of x squared plus 1, minus 1. So ito yung candidate limit natin. So in this case, alam natin this is ano eh, less than the square root of x squared plus 1. Yan. And so, less than na yan. This is less than um, absolute value of um, x plus 1 ba? Alam natin yan? Uh, less than or equal. Kasi pag si x is 1, magiging ganito siya eh. Mangyayari, magiging square root of 2. So, 2. If x is 0, parang 1, 1. Parang ganun. Okay. So, eto na yung equality natin. So, this is less than absolute value of x plus 1. 
Tama ba? Kasi di ba, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So yan. In general math. Okay, so this is less than delta plus 1. So we know that our delta is epsilon minus 1. So this is equal to epsilon. Therefore, the limit of the square root of x squared plus 1 as x approaches 0 is 1. That's it. So if you have any questions or clarification, please let me know. Okay, that's all for today and thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, please let me know so that we can discuss on that. And guys, thank you. And for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. Thank you and have a great day.